have to pay attention to the ethics of our profession, knowing also that our profession at times has acted very unethically in terms of when public health, for example, embraced eugenics, but also had its critics of eugenics as well. So I think one thing is to start with saying that social determinants are not things. Social determinants arise out of the societal relationships of power, and particularly power and property. And one key ethical consideration is always thinking about who's benefiting from harming others when we think about the many of the key obstacles that impede our ability to have health equity and health justice. And the very core consideration so that you have to think about people, you have to think about people in the past and in the present with an eye towards the future who are making policies, make, holding on to power, not who are allowing for equity to actually exist. And that has to be named up front, and to me that's a fundamental ethical duty in public health. But to give them very two concrete examples very, very quickly, one is that we know that to understand the health of the public and to understand the health of the people, we need to have a good data infrastructure. And data infrastructure means the people who actually collect the data, who actually record it, who actually have the equipment and the personnel to communicate it, to actually have connected capacity across this country from local to tribal to county to state to federal. And we don't have that. And we see increasingly reports in the press that were, what the problems were, the lack of data, to have the transparency needed to make the evidence, to make the decisions, as tied to a lack of resources. But I just published a letter in The Lancet pointing out that among other things, if you talk about the three, four, five, whatever billion per year that might be needed to fix this problem, it's 1% of the US military budget. And more than one million people have died in this COVID pandemic in the US alone. And that's 10 times more the number of military casualties that we've had since World War II. So something is amiss here. And can we try to really emphasize what the values are and what the priorities are? Because it's not, again, about things. It's about decisions and people and power relations. The second point I'd like to make that makes it very transparent about ethical considerations is that principle of interdependence. And the example that I've written about recently is one of thinking about the problems of fracking. So fracking is not only about pollution or about fossil fuel economies. It is all of that. It's about, economic, it's about extractivism. But it's also about the social relations of the people. So when you set up things like in the United States, it's repeatedly documented, but there's only a sliver of research on this. Well, who does the fracking? Who are the people that are brought in as laborers to work on doing the fracking? The setting up of man camps, what has happened with increases of sexual violence that has occurred in relation to that with STS, sexually transmitted infectious diseases. What does that mean for kids that are born and the impacts on the next generation? What does that mean for the other species that are there? What does it even mean for the connections that go way beyond just thinking about fracking as a thing, fracking as, few, as creating changes in what's going on in geology, all of those things. To think interconnected, which is a core principle of tied to health equity, tied to health justice, means reminding everybody of these all these connections that become embodied within us and are represented in what becomes the health of populations, the metrics that we use, and the what we see for health inequities. So I think these are the things that make it very concrete and very tangible. These are the embodied truths of our existence and are what we must fight for to correct the harms done and always ask who is benefiting from doing the harms. Because that's the part that often gets left out of framing what are the good aspirations, but not who is actually got interests that are served by curbing rights. And I'll leave it at that.